Hola, y'all. It is storming. Like, majorly storming. I have worked the entire day on the house. I decided to do spring cleaning since I wasn't able to do... I'm going to talk loud because of the rain. Since I wasn't able to spring clean over spring break, that's what I did today. And I got almost everything done in the house except the attic and the clothing. So, I'll try to continue that this week. But at some point this week, I want to work on the porch outside in the pool. So, it took all day. And like I said, I, we didn't get to any clothing. We got rid of all the toys. Just... We decluttered the entire house. Anything that has not been used, I said, played with or used in a month, it's gotta go. Including decorations, like, I just want less clutter, you know? I don't like a cluttered house. I keep it picked up every day, but sometimes when you start having too much decor, it just feels stuffy and cluttered. And I wanted to get rid of it. And I don't know about you, but I have found the more children I have, I have three, the more children you have, like the more stuff you have, then the more it ends up in the wrong place. So we really just simplified life a lot today. I mean, I put my head down and I got to work. And I wanted to talk very briefly about something that just came to my mind because I did work all day doing things that had to be done. Um, and I wanna talk about Mary and Martha I had read something on it about the story of Mary and Martha and Jesus. I have heard it talked about one way my entire life. And it's kind of a thing with me. When I hear something talked about one way all the time, I try to reread it, restudy it, relook at it, and get a different perspective because... I want a different perspective. I just want to see it from every angle possible. And so often we filter everything that we read from the Bible. We filter it through a Western lens, an American lens, our culture's lens. And we have to remember, or at least try to remember, that when we read the Bible, we need to think of it in the context that it was written, the culture that it was written for, I'm putting ferns in the water. Since it's um, raining, they can get, you know, watered. The culture that it was written for, the people it was written to, those things need to be taken in account because um, it doesn't necessarily change the message. I guess in some places it could really alter it, but you have a better understanding because these places were not in America. It was not 2023. Culture was incredibly different. Jewish culture. Um, the, the, the day and hour was different. So it's important to look at it through multiple lens, I think, and come up with, you know, a complete picture of what it is you're looking at. So I want to talk about Mary and Martha really quickly. And the reason I want to talk about that is because so often when I've heard it, in my mind, I have always identified with Martha. And it was like everybody was just spitting on Martha. And I identified with Martha. Somebody's coming to your house. You want it to look nice. You got to cook dinner. You have to have snacks available. You need to have drinks available. It's called being a good hostess. You don't leave dirt on the floor. You don't leave nasty stuff around. You make sure it smells nice, it's swept, it's cleaned up. That is part of honoring your guest. I have always looked at Martha and thought, I'm with you, girl. That's what I would be doing. Jesus is coming to my house. I'm cleaning the house. I'm putting a pot roast in the Instant Pot. I am going to maybe make some fresh bread. I'm going to make sure the linens <laughs> are washed and clean. I am going to make sure that his visit to my house is comfortable, clean, welcoming, that it smells nice, that he is fed, that he's comfortable and he can rest. Because I cannot rest 
in a dirty place. I cannot rest in a place that doesn't smell nice. I cannot relax in a place that I'm not comfortable in. So I try to make my abode comfortable for whoever is coming over. And by comfortable, I want you to be able to kick back, relax, have a snack, have a drink, sit down, chill out, have a nice clean place to sleep. I want you to have a nice bathroom to go to. I want you to have good smelling soap. I get you, Martha. I get you. Okay? Now, we have Mary. There's nothing wrong with Mary. In this particular story, she is sitting at Jesus' feet, listening to him teach. Okay? Martha, and I didn't even go reread this story before I came in here. Not completely. Came out here. So, I, I, I know this story because I identify with it, but hopefully I get all the details right. Oh, my word. What? You can't do that. Sorry about that. My husband walked out. He has to go pick up our son from a youth event. And uh, he scared me to death, to be quite honest. I lost my, <laughs> my entire train of thought. <clears throat> now he's just aggravating the dog out of me. Anyway, Mary is sitting at her feet. And Martha comes up and is like, I'm out. I'm over here killing myself. Trying to get everything ready and trying to do all the things that... We're supposed to do. Would you please tell her to come help me? Okay. Jesus says something to the effect of. Martha. Mary has chosen. The, the better part. And I won't take it away from her. Okay. And it was like a universal. Thing. Like everybody who read it was like. Mm -hmm, yep. The one who was constantly working. Wasn't doing what Jesus wanted. And the one that was at his feet. You know it's been used as a lesson in priorities. Okay. And I'm not saying that there's not a lesson in priorities there. There definitely is. We can work and work and work and work and work. For the kingdom of God. And in the world. But we can also work and work and work and work in the church. And in the kingdom of God. And not have a relationship with him at all. Which a lot of times goes into the section of uh, salvation by works. Because we just think we're doing all this stuff. We're doing all this stuff. And we don't mean to intentionally. Some people do. But some people don't. They just work and work and work and work. And they feel like they're earning their salvation. And they don't spend time with God. There's a great lesson in that. Sure, you could take that for sure. And teach that lesson. And you'd be like everybody else on the planet because that's what that is used for. Is it applicable? A hundred percent. But there was something else to me there. Like, cause I, and maybe it's because I identified with Martha. I wanted to find another version. I wanted to find someone else. Look at this and explain to me why oh, Jesus did not see how hard Martha was working to make everything right for him. And she was left with that burden to bear on her own while her sister sat down like all the other men in the room because I believe it was predominantly if not all males except for Mary and Martha the way I read it I could be wrong but the majority well I'm gonna get to that so it's like okay all of y'all get to sit down and read and listen to him teach which I would love to do but if I sit down you're all gonna be upset that there's no dinner cooked that the house is dirty. That there's nothing to drink or eat. Are you? Are y'all picking up what I'm laying down? A lot of people. A lot of people. Want to talk and teach. About priorities. But the moment. That. <laughs> they do not have the things they want. Because you chose the better part. All of a sudden it changes. Because if you want everyone to participate in the better part, then you better help. And I'm not aiming that at anybody. Thankfully, I don't have to worry about that. My husband helps. You just see him go. You just saw him leave to go get our son. He took our son to the youth event. He went and got dinner for me today, me and the kids, because I was cleaning. Like, I am so thankful that I have a husband who helps with all chores. He washes laundry. He helps. He doesn't cook. That's the only thing. But I love to cook. So that works itself out. But 
He does the laundry. He helps with the kids. He does all the ironing. He gets the kids ready for church. I help with Ava because of her hair, but he handles the boys. He buys all of the boys' clothing. He does all of the shopping for that. If I need an errand run, he will go and do it for me. I am incredibly blessed and I'm so grateful. But when people want to talk about priorities, but they're not willing to help, that that gets into a little bit of a sticky situation. That's all I'm going to say. You have to be careful with that. If you're going to bark at someone about having their priorities right, but you're not willing to lift your finger and help them so that they have time to do the greater part, um... It's just not, it's just not right. It's incredibly hypocritical. But I wanted to look at that deeper. I just was like, God is too understanding. Martha didn't do anything wrong. Even if Mary chose the better thing, Martha wasn't wrong in what she was doing. So I just, I was reading. So I found something today and I was like, okay, that helps me a little bit. Because it was talking about the culture of the day. And the culture of the day was that the women didn't sit down and hear the teaching and the learning or whatever. They were supposed to be in the kitchen. It was like that was just for the men, okay? Not only that, it said that it was typical that everybody in that room was probably sitting in a chair or on a bench. But she was kneeling at his feet. She was sitting at his feet. They said, which was an incredible act of humility. And back in the day, what it signified was if you were sitting at someone's feet, that meant you were professing. You didn't even have to say it with words. You were professing with your body language that you were listening to this person and learning from them and admitting with your posture that you needed to know what they were saying and you were submitting yourself to their teachings. Okay. So Mary's gesture here is way bigger than just skipping out on kitchen duty. She was posturing herself as a disciple, which Jesus had no problem with. Jesus appointed female disciples and even female apostles. We had a judge back in the Old Testament that was female. We have the New Testament scriptures have female preachers and ministers. That wasn't a big deal to Jesus, but it was a big deal to Martha and all the men that were present in the room because she had no place sitting in that room listening to teaching. She had no place making herself a disciple by kneeling at his feet. And basically, that posture is her saying, Rabbi, I'm learning from you, which is the definition of a disciple. So what Mary did was she broke cultural norms, which Martha did not. Martha was staying in her lane where she was supposed to be. It was a shock to everybody in that room what Mary had done. It was a shock I'm to everybody. Sorry. This walk could not have been more timely. So I had to stop because my husband walked out and was like, I have to go get Brady and like scared me to death. I kind of screamed and like was in shock. So I edited that out. And then I just rounded the corner in the middle of my conversation to you guys. And my son is standing there going like panicked. And I'm like, so I stopped it and said, what? Mom, the dog is throwing up. Okay. Our puppy is not thrown up. And he's, there's the couch cushions. I know you don't want to see that. But that's how bad it is. And I'm like, what? So I go in there. He's like, it's bad. So we go in there. Thankfully, the dog has completely missed all furniture and he is thrown up on the floor. And I hate to tell you this, but just, just hear me out. It's terrible and it's a lot. So I'm doing that. I clean the entire floor, get everything up. Okay. My husband gets home. He's like, you want to watch this with us? And I'm like, I have to finish my devotion. So I'm gra I grab my phone to come out and finish. And Chris is like, the dog is throwing up. But this time I wasn't so lucky. He just threw up all over the couch. Just as much as he did the first time. I think he got choked on a bone or something. And it's terrible. 
So now half of our couch, two of our couch cushions are out there because I can't deal with that tonight. So this is a timely message. And if we're going to talk about priorities, this is one of those moments where someone might be tempted to say, I don't think anybody in their right mind would say this, but this is a great example of it. Is the devotion and spending time with God more important? Yes, in theory. But do I leave vomit in my living room with my family, my children, and this dog who's really sick and say, nope, that's got to wait because I have to walk for 20, 30 minutes. I can't do that. I have to go in and handle that. That's the Martha but there's a Mary and a Martha in all of us. Because guess what? I cleaned it up the second time. I tossed the pillows out here. I'll have to pressure wash them tomorrow. I don't know what I'm going to have to do. But I'm willing to put that off to get back to this. Maybe that's what I want to say. Maybe we shouldn't throw Martha under a bus. Because there's a little bit, or should be, I think, a little bit of her in all of us. There should be both. And there's room for both because we're not perfect. And we live in a world that has obligations, responsibilities, deadlines, and demands. What Mary did was amazing in her day because she went against culture. That's the biggest thing. She didn't go against Martha. She wasn't shunning Martha. She wasn't trying to like leave Martha with responsibilities and stick her tongue out and say, I want to spend time with him and I'm choosing the better thing. That's not what Mary was doing. And when I think we interpret that to be that today in 2023, we are doing everybody a disservice. Do you want people to show up to your house and it's disgusting? No. Jesus talks about being a good steward. I think we have to take the whole word, all of God, and put it into application. We can carve out time and should carve out time to spend with him. But we do. We, have, we are good stewards while we're here. We have to be about our father's business. And there are just demands. If my children are hungry and need something to eat, it is my responsibility to go and get them fed before I take care of myself. Now, in theory and probably in best practice, that means we get up, moms and dads, we get up earlier before they ever wake up so that we can have the better part. And that I totally get. Will it happen every day? Maybe not because sometimes we're tired. We may be sick. You might have a late night before and it might be more troubling or, or just, it might be really hard to do that. Just try not to set a standard so high and lofty that not even you can reach it. And try not to put such a burden on everybody else to hit a standard that you know you're not hitting. That's what the Pharisees and Sadducees did. The Bible talks about they laid weights so heavy on these people and they wouldn't even lift them with their little fingers, what it said. They laid burdens on people and they laid these preconceived ideas on people and they laid these ridiculous things that they had to do and adhere to, but they weren't doing it. But all these good and honest people who thought, who thought, I have to do this to please God. I have to do this to be right with the temple and the priest and my religion and all of that. They, they, they killed themselves to try to do it. And when they couldn't live up to it, they quit. That's what they did. They quit. Do we want a bunch of quitters? Do we? Do we want a bunch of people that quit the kingdom of God because we make it so difficult that we make no room for humanity? I know what we need to do in order to stand strong. We need to talk to God. We need to read the word. We talked about that at least four times a week. The demands on us in life I talked to my mentor, I'm done. I talked to my mentors a long time ago and they said the most challenging part of their life was when they were raising children. That's why I talked about gentle leading the other day. 
And I'm not here to like throw stones at anybody. I'm not, I'm not. I just, God is so understanding. And I just pray that as people of God, we can be understanding too. We can be supportive and understanding because that's what people need. That's what I need. I think, you know, male, I think I'm going to bring it into male and female. Males and females are different. We have different obligations. Some women stay at home and men work. Some men stay at home and women work. Okay. So it really comes down to a personal level, but I think we have to respect the workload of each person. And be understanding of the pressure that they're under to fulfill their obligations, not only to God, but to their bosses, to their spouses, to their children. I just know that we are really trying, all of us are really trying really hard to do the right thing for everybody involved. I, I've often wondered, and I've asked God, how is it fair, Lord? How is it fair for some people who don't have jobs outside the house, man and woman, and they have all this time to spend with you without having to get up all this time to spend with you? And I don't. It's not an issue between me and that person, whoever they may be. It's only an issue when I thought that God expected the same thing of us. And it's only an issue when those people expect the same thing of us. I guess it's just par for the course tonight. I've had to stop because my husband, I had to clean up two, two times. The dog threw up. My phone has died three times. I'm officially ending it. And now it says my battery is about to run out. He threw up again. Okay. 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 Three times. The dog's thrown up three times. He's choking. I'm done. I, I'm done. The Martha in me has to go. The Mary wants to keep walking and talking, but the Martha is obligated to go. So I guess that's all I want to say. I think I'm a little bit of both. And honestly, I think we all probably should be. We have earthly obligations and we have heavenly expectations and a need to spend time in his presence and away from the demands of this life. I'm a little bit of both. I'm both Mary and I'm Martha. Happy Saturday. Love with no reservation. You're not looking for perfection. There's no need in me pretending. I'll give you everything. I'll give you my full attention nothing less than my devotion oh speak to me and I will listen I'll give you everything I'll give you everything lift it up